Today we're going to do a fun little demonstration which shows the solubility and concentration of various mineral products. And we use an electrical demonstration because our bodies are electrical in a lot of ways. This electrical demonstration uses a light bulb and we've cut a circuit and extended the circuit, the open circuit with these probes so that when I touch the probes to a penny here, it will complete the circuit and make the light come on. So we've got various glasses here with pure water, and if I put the probes into pure water, there's not enough soluble minerals and trace minerals in the water to complete the circuit and make the light come on. Again, we use an electrical demonstration because our bodies are electrical in a lot of ways. In fact, in this country, the clinical definition of death is when all electrical activity in the brain is gone. That's when they know you're dead. That's how important soluble minerals are. They are the conductors and generators of electrical activity within the body. And without them, we don't continue to live. This demonstration has been used by the Anderson family for decades, and it's a fun thing that we do that shows the superiority of our liquid ionic minerals over all the other minerals products on the market. So the first thing we're going to do is we've got a little alfalfa powder. And you know, there's quite a few sources of minerals where we get minerals in our diets. And of course, plants are one of those key sources. Alfalfa powder, or alfalfa, is known as the granddaddy of the herbs because it has very deep roots which pick up minerals very, very deep down in the soil. And so, as you will see, the minerals in this herb are both soluble and concentrated. You can see the light bulb starting to come on a little bit. The minerals are going right into solution. And in this form, the minerals are in a soluble ionic state. Solubility is important because if a mineral is not soluble, then it will simply pass through without being utilized by the body. For example, if I needed copper in the diet and I were to swallow this penny, it would just pass through and I wouldn't be able to get any, util any utilization from the copper. And so that's, again, why it's so important that minerals are soluble. And, of course, concentration is important because if a mineral isn't concentrated, then you're simply not getting adequate mineral to do the job in the body. Industry has recognized for a lot of years that we need minerals. And so one of the first mineral supplements that came on the market was a mined mineral or mined minerals. And what they did was they found ancient seabed or ancient vegetation beds, ancient petrified vegetation. And while these products were loaded with minerals, they simply were not in a very soluble form. You could run an analysis, and indeed the minerals are there. But again, if they just simply pass through, then you're not getting the utilization or the value from those particular mineral products. So let's see what this type of mineral product does in solution. So we can mix this up. And we've done this demonstration and left this product, these types of products, in for even days, and we get the same results. Now, of course, in your stomach you have acids, which are going to break the minerals down somewhat, but we just believe that you're a lot better off if you start with a mineral that's already in a totally ionic state. And as you can see, the light bulb doesn't light up, again, indicating that the mineral is not soluble or concentrated. So, why are ionic minerals or electrolytes so important? First of all, electrolytes conduct the body's electrical energy as, we, as, as we've talked about. Secondly, they maintain proper fluid balances in the body. That's why it's important when you're out in the heat, working out, uh, have a lot of fluid loss, you need to replace your electrolytes to maintain proper fluid balances. Next, um, ionic minerals or electrolytes maintain the pH balances within the body. There are places in the body where we need more acid in the stomach. Your body uses, hydro, uses chloride to manufacture hydrochloric acid. There are other places in the body where your body needs to be more alkali in the cells, in, in outside and inside the cells. If we're too acidic, then we're a lot more prone to to get infections and disease. So we need to have our cells more on the alkali side. But it's these soluble minerals and trace minerals in electrolyte form that regulate the pH balances in the body, which is an essential function to, to good health. When industry recognized that mined minerals were not soluble and hence not as bioavailable, 
they started to develop colloidal minerals. Now colloidal minerals uh, are minerals which have been leached from a, generally from a mined mineral source. And colloidal is a suspension in solution. A suspension is a little like the particulate matter in the air on a smoggy day. It's suspended there, but if it got, were calm for maybe, maybe many days, it would fall out and, and it's not part of the true solution. Whereas ionic minerals are actually part of the true solution. If I were to release oxygen into the air, that oxygen would become part of the solution. And ionic minerals become part of the solution just like oxygen into the air. And so again, that's a difference of solubility. Colloidal minerals are also much larger and not capable of passing through semi-permeable membrane. And again, the semi-permeable membrane is how minerals are absorbed into the villi and the stomach and how they get into the body. So I'm going to uh, just put some of these drops into our solution and see how they react. Count the drops, there's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 15, 16, 20. So there's about 20 drops and we're starting to see some conductivity, which also implies that the minerals are also ionic in form. But that took about 20 drops. Um, now I'm gonna try the most powerful mineral supplement available on the market today. Ion A concentrated mineral drops is made from a natural solar evaporation and precipitation process on the Great Salt Lake. It takes about 50 gallons of Great Salt Lake water to make a gallon of concentrated mineral drops. I'm going to just uh, open this up and try to get one drop in. Okay, there's one drop. And you're, you can see the light bulb starting to come on. And that's that's good, but we consider a day supply to be anywhere from 30 to 40 drops. So I'll just count a few more drops and see how it reacts. There's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and a day supply would be about 40 drops. Well, that's about as bright as connecting it directly onto the penny. And that's why you're going to get superior results with ionic concentrated mineral drops. It's concentrated, highly concentrated. It's as concentrated as you can get it and still remain in a liquid solution. And it's also balanced as well as ionic in nature. So it's capable of conducting all of the tiny electrical charges required throughout the body.